All right. In amplified acceptance, uh, uh, under certain circumstances, uh, the mere amplification on the offer must be understood as an acceptance of the original offer plus a new offer which is contained in the amplification. All right. Now, the uh, usual example given by uh, teachers for their students to understand the amplified acceptance is uh, example here is a seller of a uh, agricultural property it is a, a grazing field so hectares of grazing green fields okay now it is what the owner seller is proposing to sell this property grazing land now in that property are already livestock you have sheep you have cows you have pigs you have horses you know you have camels you have dinosaurs you have alligators <laughs> but what i'm trying to point out is there is livestock but you will note from the tenor of the original offer it excluded the livestock because clearly it limited the offer to the sale only of the grazing land so here is now the buyer the buyer accepts the offer of the property the grazing land but okay adds his offer this time to also acquire the livestock. So, sabi nung buyer, o sige, bibili ko rin, pero bilhin ko na rin yung livestock ko oh, para uh, magamit na kaagad. So, that is the principle of an amplified acceptance. Now, the amplification is not an acceptance, but is considered to be now a offer, an offer. It is a proposal. So, in effect, okay, so, mirror image ba yun? Hindi. Dahil ang, ang image lang nung offer ay yung agricultural grazing land lang. Sans yung livestock. Pero ang acceptance, pumasok na yung livestock. So, hindi pareho yan. So, would that now constitute as a valid acceptance? At least in so far as the offer for the sale of the grazing land. Sabi ng Supreme Court, yes. Kaya, once that is communicated to the offeror, the offeror is now bound. And there is a perfected executory contract. Pero paano sabi ng offeror, eh, ayokong ibenta yung, yung livestock ko, yung lupa lang. Ay, so be it. The point is, okay, there is an acceptance of the uh, offer for the sale of the grazing land and it now is a matter also on the part of the offeror whether he would agree to accept the proposal constituting now the sale of the livestock which is what we refer to as the amplification of the offer so one clarificatory to amplify. Now, the third is, of course, in regard to what you call the complex offers. So, we have to go back to complex offers. And ulit yung complex offer, this would be a single offer which would involve two or more contracts. So, ang issue dito, kung dalawa yung contracts na in offer the mirror image uh, of an acceptance would be to accept both contracts offered. Understand? So the issue is, uh, what if the offer accepted only one of the two or several contracts offered? Now that would not be a mirror image anymore. Oh, lang. Mm. So, would it result to a contract now 
Here we will just have to consider the rule in how complex offers are considered to have been agreed upon. So, all right. So, offers are interrelated. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, if the offers are interrelated, then a partial acceptance will not result to a juridical tie. So, when do you see that they are interrelated? The contract to be perfected is needs to be the entire offer must be accepted. So, offers are interrelated. For example, you say, oh, you want to buy my house and lot. So, actually, there would be two different separate contracts. One, in so far as the house, and two, the lot. But obviously, they are interrelated. It is very difficult for us to consider a sale merely of the house, but not of the lot. So, the acceptance should be for both house and lot. Number two, the offers are not interrelated. Here, the single acceptance of each offer results in a perfected contract unless the offeror has made it clear that one is dependent upon the other and acceptance of both is necessary. Oh, I think that is self-explanatory. So, for example, I tell you, I will uh, sell to you my house and lot and my cars in the garage. Now, in so far as the third contract of sale involving the vehicles in the garage, it is not clearly related to the sale of the house and lot. So, in this particular case, would uh, acceptance of merely the purchase of the cars, but not the house and lot, result to a juridical type? Generally, yes, because the contract of the sale of the vehicles cannot be considered as a necessary agreement in order to validate also uh, a, 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 an acceptance of the house and that. But if the offeror stated that you need to accept both, otherwise forget about it. That's it. Hence, perfection here will entail acceptance of those contracts. So, in effect, how would this be an exception to the rule of what you call mirror image rule? Insofar as the first uh, situation is concerned, and in first situation, hindi sila interrelated, walang, walang, walang requirement yung offeror, kailangan tanggapin lahat ng kontrata, and ang tinanggap lang ng offeree ay isa. So, would that be reflective of what the offer was? No. Kalahati lang, di ba? So, this would be the, the exceptions to the rule of a mirror image rule. Right? So, what is the, what is the absolute? Uh, absolute, the acceptance must be absolute. Adhering to the mirror image rule. If it is not mirror image, meaning the acceptance, that mirror image of the author, no juridical type. Except, one, facultative, two, and so far as clarificatory, okay, acceptance. There is a clarification made. Third, in amplified acceptance. And fourth, in regard to complex offers where the several contracts are not interrelated to each other. So just an acceptance of one, two, but not all would result to a juridical tie insofar as those contracts are concerned. Okay? So, 
I think that is very clear already. Now, uh, the next one is, okay, manner, form of acceptance. Okay. How should the offeror, or sorry, offeree accept? Mm. 